So, um, are you familiar with MMA? Do you watch? Do are you a fan of mixed mental, mix mixed martial arts? I always say mixed mental arts, um, but mixed martial arts. Do you like UFC? Well, if so, you would have known that TJ Dillashaw has unfortunately been banned for two years because he tested hot. He popped hot. He pissed hot for an EPO. An EP fucking O. If you wonder what an EPO is, that's what most of the Tour de France guys use. Um, made famous by the likes of Lance Armstrong and many others before him. Because what EPO does is it allows you essentially to go for longer. It's like an endurance um sports perf- uh you know ped right performance enhancing drug right it allows you to it, it just allows you to have cardio for days and i guess you know at the weight that tj dillashaw fights having a, a, a gas tank of that kind of ilk is just you know you can't really um what's that called you can't really equate how much of um how much how much that really helps you in your performance so disappointing going forward um the thing that makes it really gnarly is that they went back to his previous fights um, and they and they realized that he tested hot for the previous two fights that he'd done. They fought when he, I think when he when he, when he um knocked out Cody Garbrandt, so they gave him a two year suspension. And again, um, considering his age, considering the stigma around PEDs, that's essentially his career over. But what makes it what's really funny to me is a conversation around it because I listened to a little bit to the fire and a kid with Brendan Schaub and um Brian Callen. And Brendan Shaw was going on and on and on about like how it's a like this is this is a dangerous precedent that they're setting um, Nusada by testing people um, from their previous fights. He said, oh, "How far back are they going to go? If they're going to test two years ago, are they going to dig up like old legends and test their thing? And what happens with their bands and the fighters don't have any say, could have a union? Just kind of bemoaning the fact, right? and it really didn't really make sense to me in general, right? Because I think his general um, understanding of it, him being a professional fighter, Brendan Shaw, which you know he's got much more knowledge of it than I have." But his general kind of impression of it was that everyone kind of does drugs, right? Everyone does some sort of performance enhancing drug because at the elite level of sports, the f- margins are so thin that if any if anyone could get any kind of advantage, they're going to take it, right? I think that's what he could basically is getting at. And that's fine. That's no problem. It's okay. But I think to the average consumer, to the general public, I think we have this impression in our heads that our favorite athletes are not on drugs. We have the impression that they're drinking Lucozade, um they're drinking water, they're eating an orange, they're doing yoga, they're working out, lifting weights, and that's how they're the best player. And then matched with their talent, that's how they become what they become in a sport. There are some of us that are a bit more savvy, they're a bit more in the know, that have this understanding that there are some people in the sport that are using some performance hunting drugs. But I think it's a little bit of a stretch to say that everyone is doing it, because I don't think everyone is doing it. That's the thing. Right? I don't think everyone is doing it. I don't think everyone can do it, especially stuff like EPO. These are like the... Um, these are like the... Um, this is like the luxury fashion um, version of it, right? Like the other stuff is like, I don't know, high street um, drugs. But this is like the luxury fashion. Um, this is stuff where you'll need a doctor. you need a consultant. you need a plan. you need to just get specked out in the calendar. This is some high level shit. You can't just take this. You can't just buy this stuff at a gas station, for instance, right? So with this sort of stuff, not everyone can do it. So the idea that everyone is doing it, that's why that's why they shouldn't go back and retroactively ban people from the other previous fight. It's a bit of a weightless argument. It's not doesn't really have any substance to me in that regard. And I also think it's not a bad thing for Usada to come in and try and clean up a sport that, you know, the UFC and Dana White is obviously trying to make mainstream, right? They're trying to push this thing into the mainstream. They're trying to give it an image that it's clean or whatever it may be. It happened in baseball, right? When they did, um, when they popped everyone, and um, that kind of, you know, led to a bit of a low. And then after that, I'm not sure the testing is as stringent as it was previously. But you need to give the public the impression that you're trying to do something. You can't just let everyone just go, you know, just do whatever they want to do. And it be the wild, wild west. Even though we know as a public that for sure some people are doing it. We want the impression that they're on top of it and no one is doing it. And I think for the fighters that aren't doing it, it's a little bit unfair as well to have this idea that, you know, we're just going to have a hands up attitude. And if you, you, you know, you're allowed to do stuff as long as you're not silly with it. No, I don't think that's really fair in that regard. And I think in general, like most fighters, or especially um, pundits out there who look at these sort of issues, they always kind of complain that, you know, the sport isn't um, fair in some regards, right? Whether it comes to pay or whether it comes to fights or whether it comes to sponsorships or promotions or whatever it may be. And the one thing that the, you know, the UFC is trying to clean up is the side, you know, the performance side of it, right? To try to make sure everyone's on an even playing ground and somehow people are complaining about it. And it's a bad thing. I don't think that is a bad thing because, you know, you're talking about mixed, men- you're talking about mixed martial arts, right? You're talking about the high level um, combat, right? You're talking about people who are trained killers for the most part, right? 
you're talking about people who do doing this right who've been you know practicing a, a certain type of martial arts for you know x amount of years under the tutelage of some of the best pra best um, practitioners in the world or teachers in the world then you add on top of that the fact that they have performance enhancing drugs it's extremely dangerous for the person that doesn't do it, right? If you get Will kicked in the head by somebody and then suddenly they jump on top of you because referee hasn't um, got across to um, end the fight and you end up getting seven, I don't know, three or four elbows off the top of your head because they got energy for days, you could, you could, your life could be um, dramatically changed forever, right? You could never be, the, you will, probably won't be the same person ever again. So the fact that, you know, um, we should have a hands off attitude towards it, I don't think that is. Um, wise and i don't think that's also taken into consideration the safety of other fighters and also like i said it's just not fair for people that can't do it and won't do it because there's plenty of fighters out there that aren't doing this sort of thing and i think by and large these um um bans should act as a deterrent for most people that you know most people know that if they do do it they have to do it with the most high level person in the world they have to commit to spending a lot of money and if they do get um, cool, then they're gonna get banned, right? And I think we saw with TJ Dillashaw when the news came out that he got he got popped. He immediately vacated his belts. Well, but and I think from there we could have automatically saw that okay, cool, this is something bad because he he immediately understood what the severity of it was. He kind of knew the field he was playing in, right? He knew that if he got popped, it was gonna be over for him. But I just find it strange that some people in the MMA world are kind of a bit up in arms about this. Like people are like. I don't know like it's for me it's like var like it this is this is cheating right let's not put any other word against it whether or not everyone is doing it or not whether or not this is what happens in professional sports this is cheating right you shouldn't be taking drugs to make your performances better this is what it is right you that's not within the laws that rules of the game so it's cheating by and large so if it's cheating you should try and get cheating out of the sport you're not going to get it all the way out it's impossible to do that because i'm sure the um, technological advances in PEDs are always one step ahead of the testing. It's essentially, the testing is trying to catch things that they have no idea they're trying to catch, right? Um, and they only have to they have to catch one person in order to have like some form of frame of reference of what's going on, and it gets sophisticated, sophisticated. I'm sure the money in it for the doctors that are making these drugs is is crazy because you know the gains that the athlete can have are you know there's no amount of money you can put on. Um, if you take a performance enhancing drug, there's no amount of price. There's no amount of price you wouldn't be willing to pay to get away with it because you know what that could do to, for your career, right? We saw even recently Woodley come out saying, "Oh, um, he never knew how much the belt um, could. He never knew how much um, credence um, he was given because he was a champ. Uh, then now that he's lost it, right, against um, um, Kamara Usman, right, he realized that how much of that, what, how much that belt added to his kind of overall legend. He says, of course, that like, I'm still a big deal, but he's he's can see the difference of what life is like without the belt. So imagine all the opportunities um, Woodley had uh, got because he was a champion, right? Um, things that he probably isn't aware of that came um, just hand in hand because he was walking around with a belt and he was a champion of the USC. Now imagine if you are a, a guy that's, I don't know, top 10 ranked and you're trying to climb your way up. There's no price you can put on the idea that if you smoke a couple of people um, that you got lined up and then you get a title shot in your third fight, that could that could drastically change your life and the life of your family, right? Or the life of your family's family if you play it correctly. Um, but again, I, I, I just think it's a weird thing to argue against. I think it's cheating by and large. And I, I look at it in the same way as VAR. People, no, some football pundits out there like, oh my God, this is ruining the game, the stoppage and all that stuff and waiting for the decision. Dudes, we watch football and we support the teams we support. When a, when a decision happens that's clearly wrong and teams advance, we get annoyed. What happened recently with the Terry on reaping where he, he handballed the ball, right? And um, Ireland got knocked out of the thing and France went through. I forgot, was it the Euro or something like that? That was a handball. We all knew it was a handball. France cheated. They got through because VAR wasn't around. We don't want that to happen, right? That's not what football's about. We don't want somebody to earn a penalty kick because they dived, right? And no one touched them. And then that goal they score is a 1-0 just before half time. That changes the whole com complexion of the game. The other team was on top. They they had a counter attack. The person dives in the box. They score one one goal before half time. That completely changes the climate of the game. We don't want people getting sent off because somebody did like a phantom headbutt that didn't really happen. These things we don't want. So we get VAR to change the decisions to help referees out because no help referee job is hard and pundits complain. Look at just the other day with um Barcelona's uh, first goal, the Suarez goal. The linesman immediately flagged it off like it was offside. You can understand why, because he looking from the naked eye looked offside. Immediately checked it on VAR. It got proven it was a goal. Done. No problem. We're not we're not criticizing the, the linesman because he's doing it in real time, and we're not criticizing VAR because they got to the right decision. But I just don't get this understanding that all this help that they're trying to impart in sports to try and clean it up, try and make it a better sport for people to watch. 
somehow people are getting annoyed by it. It's just a very, very bizarre thing to look at. But anyway, this is an article on um, MMA fighting that talks about it. TJ Dillasaur seemed for greatness, um, headed for greatness. Turns out he was too good to be true. Um, this kind of stuff I don't really, you know, again, if you're Cody Garbrandt, I get it, right? It's, a, you know, the guy that beat you twice was on was on stuff. But I think in terms of skill, I don't think I don't think we can look at those fights and say TJ Dillasaur won because of his endurance. He won. Hmm, it's hard to judge though, isn't it? Because he's, in, you know, his skill, your endurance is better. If you, your, your, I'd imagine you could use your skills better if you got better endurance. Anyway, but I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Could you? But I, I still see how Cody could be upset. You got knocked out by this guy twice, and he was hot twice. Like you know. But anyway, it goes on. Uh, the article says as following: It took barely, uh, it took barely over three weeks from the time TJ Dillashaw revealed he failed a drug, uh, a a post fight test of, of his acceptance of penalty, a two year ban from the competition. In the end, there was really nothing to contest. Even after initially told his fans in an Instagram post that I'm working with my team to understand what has occurred. The thing is, the evidence shows that T.J. Dillashaw knew all along that he had occurred. He was blatantly cheating. Not only did Dillashaw test positive for uh, recumbent human erythritol EPO in a urine sample he provided in January 18, 2019. Usada went back and rested, tested, retested the 28, 27, uh, December 28 sample. That too came back positive. With that, it was checkmate. EPO stimulates the production of red blood cells, which improves oxygen delivery from the lungs to the working muscles, which allows you to work your body past normal points of stamina. Having read this, right, it's, I don't know, would this be strange to say? How many people do you think take EPO that just run regular park runs and London marathons and Hockney Half Marathons? How many people do you think that do that? Do you think there's some psychos out there, like some, you know, high-performing, no, maybe not even high-performing, just some, you know, running enthusiasts like myself who really wants to do well and decides that they're going to take an EPO, um, when they're going to run the Berlin Half Marathon. I think there's quite a few of them, innit? It must be a lot of people that do it. it there must be, there must be. And again, I think I, me I mentioned um, before that, I think Brendan Shaw mentioned it, that, uh, that EPO isn't a drug that you can take, like, you know, just off the shelf. It's not like some, it's not like sticking a lead up, up your ass. You need to be monitored and have a doctor on standby and all that sort of stuff because it thickens your blood and shit. But I'm sure nowadays, especially when you look at someone like Tim Ferriss, there's always that kind of um, uh, self-experiment. I'm pretty sure you could do it uh, to yourself if you wanted to, right? I'm pretty sure you could. Probably not the safest thing to do, but must be some psychos out there that are administering EPO um, to themselves. Um, crazy, isn't it? Like, imagine if you're like a, just a regular dude and you're taking an EPO so you could you can beat your PR at the fucking Hackney Half Marathon or the London Marathon. That must be nuts. Anyway, it's a huge competitive advantage, one that could say allow you to keep blasting powerful combinations as your opponent begins to wilt from exhaustion. But Dillis showed that was a speciality. He was a world volume fighter who could crack all night. Turns out he was assisted for at least one night, maybe more. Um, the EPO that Dillisho tested positive for is uh, synthetic. It's injectable only. There's no chance it was mistakenly included in some sort of in some store bought supplement or gas station pill. It was taken on purpose. It was taken to cheat. Um, some fight. Oh, I wonder who else is gonna get popped, man, from this. Think about. It. I wonder who else they're gonna pop for this. Because you know, you know, it's, it's not only again. I don't believe everyone takes drugs, but you know, it's not only Tito Dulosor for sure. Some fighters have tested positive but walk through the sport un under a haze of confusion regarding their guilt. John Jones, right? Which cannot be totally exclusively determined. Dillashaw will not be one of those. He is now and forever will be tainted. It is a long fall from grace for a fighter who had unexpectedly surged. But UFC probably won't allow John Jones to get tested hot because he's their guy. If he goes, it's finished. He's essentially holding up the UFC single-handedly, isn't it? Look how, much, look how many times he's going to fight this year alone. Like, fucking hell. Um... Who was unexpectedly? Um, it was a long fall from Grace from a fighter who unexpectedly, unexpectedly uh, surged from modest success as a collegiate fighter at Cal State to consideration as one of the best pound for pound fighters on earth. Heading into January's UFC event, Dillashaw seemed poised to add a second UFC division of competition already in resume. All he had to do was defeat smaller Harry Nusuto to capture the flyweight. He lost in styling his fashion, and whatever aura remained is now washed away completely with the uh, latest revelations. In one fell swoop, he went from potential double champion to knockout victim. Drug tester flunker, uh, belt relinquisher, and suspending fighter. They're going ham on him, isn't it? Jesus Christ, MMA fighting. He got hit with three pieces, with three pieces on the USADA. Jesus Christ. It was a devastating period that will define his legacy as much as the two title reigns. Dillashaw had been accused of using PDs before, including by former Team Alpha male teammate Cody Garbrand and Krim um, Holdsworth. 
Chris Holbert, sorry. Such accusations are not unusual, particularly from rivals, but these are arrived with more bite given the past relationship in play. In one instance, Garbrandt specifically accused Dillashaw of taking AP EPO T time after time, Dillashaw shrugged off the basis accusations. Dillashaw has yet to publicly comment since attempting his two-year ban, but there's nothing much he can say to dig himself out of this one. His reputation of damage is sealed, still to be determined, um, though is his athletic future. With his punishment is up, he'll just have three weeks shy of his 35th birthday, an age which few fighters wait, f few light, which few lightweight fighters continue to excel. For comparison, the average age of a bantamweight division fighter is 29, so this may well be more than just a temporary ban it may be the end of the show as a divisional force i doubt that though he probably won't come back to the ufc probably end up going to one fc or you know fighting and rise inside that i'll probably be somewhere he can go earn some money and take as much epo as he wants those guys over there don't give a shit um but yeah hard hard news to take for the teenage delicious fans out there um i still think it's cheating i don't get all the hoopla from people like brendan schraub um getting scared that people other people are going to be you know retroactive bands are going to happen for everyone i think you saw that could easily come out and say you know every fighter we test um that's fighting now in the current pool we can look back two years i think that's fine i think that's a good window right to look back at fight so everything else can kind of be null and void um i think if you take if you've been taking stuff two years ago you're going to be taking it now i don't think you're just going to take it for one fight two years ago and then suddenly stop taking it now i don't think it's something that you you suddenly stop taking especially if it's giving you that good results um so i'm not really that um bothered by it in that regard but yeah sad news for tia literal fans um again i I don't think it takes away from his victories against Kobe Garbrandt. I still think he probably would have still beat him. But you know, for in the sake of for for sake of for the sake of clarity, cheating is cheating and you have to get banned in that regard, isn't it?